Prince walks the realm, and the very crowd lashes out at those who dare settle it. Not all is lost. Dawn bring a crusade, strike out farther with each passing day, bringing Sigmar's order to these untamed lands. Every step yields new and terrible dangers. Tremors shake the earth, and monsters tear down cities. Amidst it all, something stirs in the mountains of the Grond Spine. The realm stone is alive, warped by arcane power, and it stalks the mountains with primal fury. Girl has awoken, and it does not want us here. All right, welcome back to the channel. Warhammer Man back in the studio. Got a, another little preview here from Adepticon. Let's take a look. The Realm of Beasts comes to life at Adepticon. Following the Siege of Excelsis, all the battles and bloodshed across Gur have brought the Realm of Beasts itself to life. Get ready to join the battle in Thondia. So it looks like here we basically have sort of like a season. New little setting terrain bad guy and book to go along with it thandia is a ravenous alpha continent at gur and it's where the action is right now in warhammer age of sigmar as the lore advances and the conflict escalates in a violent setting the realm itself is waking up that might be bad for anyone living there but it's great news for your games you can experience the realm of beasts like never before with this thandia strong point the realmscape box includes stacks of Sumptuous scenery building on these kits released from Warhammer Age of Sigmar last year. You'll now be able to create your own settlement in Gur. Not only that, it unleashes a new unit type upon any explorers foolish enough to carelessly venture into the bone strewn plains. So here we see basically it looks like the realm stone itself has been animated by some dark powers and turned into some magical demon beast thing what in the mortal realms is that thing it's cron spine incarnate of gore the savage apparition is a manifestation of pure amber magic created in the wake of alariel's right of life it's a new type of unit that's part of the spell part monster and all danger so this is supposed to be the realm stone it definitely looks like a little bit like Scully in its own right. This basically looks like the same as the head of this. I don't know if that's intentional or if it's just my imagination. But it basically looks exactly the same. So this is supposed to be the realm stone. And then it's magically like animated this sort of, uh, you know, skeleton demon beast creature thing. The incarnate is bonded to one of the heroes in your army and anyone in Gur can summon one. You need to be careful though. If it is bonded, champion is killed, the incarnate will go wild. It may even attack your own forces. Alongside this imposing new miniature, the kit includes loads of scenery, including the previously available domicile shell and domicile shell with winch, which represent the foundation of the new settlement following the Dawnbringer Crusades. There's also a guardian idol, which will hopefully keep the cruel boys away. Okay, so yeah, these are our two domicile pieces, one with the crane. Uh, I mean, they kind of both have like a little th something going on. And then this is like a little bit that goes with this piece. And then we see the statue here. There's a couple different ways you can build the statue. It's like two different faces on that. Overall, nice terrain. I really like that stuff. And then we have our beast and two new pieces as well. So there's new terrain to be found within two. The Mega Droth remains show just how big the beasties in Gur can grow. So obviously this is our Mega Droth remains, uh, just like massive skeleton. It's like the rib bones poking up in the air. Pretty cool overall. I like the kind of like little bits of like, you know, kind of rubble built up around it and a bunch of like little skulls and rocks and stuff. Uh, large enough for whole units to hide behind. There are skeletons in battle and a cleansing. Aqualith is ideal for anyone who has waterfall envy after seeing the Shrine Luminar. So this is very much like the Shrine Luminar, which was the um, elf, high elf 
uh, kind of like terrain feature piece that came out a while ago. But it's basically like a sort of like floating fountain waterfall type deal. It's pretty cool, actually. It's got like the chains kind of holding it up so it doesn't like float away. It has similar kind of uh, pieces that we've seen in some of the other kits as well. Uh, kind of like that crazy top bit. Very much fits into the overall aesthetic. It's pretty nice. I like the steps coming up to it. I mean, this the terrain for Sigmar now is just fantastic. I honestly can't complain. It's pretty nice. This thing is fairly cool. Skeleton's pretty cool. Overall, I'd say it's pretty nice. Pretty nice little set. And that is the Realmscape Thondian Strongpoint. So we saw one other Realmscape already. And it was basically the board and then a bunch of terrain. I believe it was two of the statues and then one each of the strong points. So it was four total pieces of terrain. So, and you know, if you basically say, okay, well, this is equivalent to that, which this is probably would be more expensive sold separately, and then it's still the two pieces of terrain, you're basically getting the Magma Droth skeleton and then the monster. That set was, I want to say, like 80 bucks, and now it's 100 So I would say this is probably going to come in closer to like, I mean, 150 I think is probably their price point for this. We'll have to see, honestly. I'm not sure if the book actually comes with it. It might actually have the book in it, too, and then maybe it's going to be closer to two. And that's still not all. Alongside the scenery and the incredible Kron Spine Incarnate of Gur, the first season of War Book is arriving for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. It expands the ongoing narrative of the mortal realms and explores the aftermath of the battle at Amberstone, Watch, and Siege of Excelsis, the Dawnbringer Crusades, and the Alpha Continent of Thondia. Alongside loads of background lore, as well as the rules for the Incarnate, this book includes new battle packs for the kinds of games, including two for narrative play, one of them focused on Path to Glory. So this is our book of Thondia. Looks like a nice, chunky hardback book seasons of war thondia includes realm rules for setting your games in thondia and mechanics for creating your own hero from the realm of beasts a grot priest on a dragon anyone would be explorers who crack open this book will also find details of the fantastical flora and fauna to be found across gore very cool picture definitely uh, nice and detailed cool stuff i like the backdrop and everything as well so as the whole realm shakes take refuge in the rest of big reveals from adepticon so it doesn't say much else about it it looks like the book is going to be separately we don't see anything on the train uh set the thondi and strong point that tells us the book would be included or anything so i would imagine these are going to be two separate things most of the books lately uh, like the new codexes and everything coming out at 55. Uh, I believe the rule book is higher than that. So I would say, let's say 60 for this. So I would say 60 for that and 150 for this. That's my guesses. Uh, overall, seems pretty cool. A new setting to play your games in if you want to mix it up. Uh, I like that the terrain has an extra little feel to it. And then like the monster and everything. Sounds like it'll have some pretty cool rules. Basically be like an ally that you can summon. And then somebody on your team is like sort of controlling him and then if that person dies all of a sudden he might go nuts and attack the rest of your army i kind of like the idea of that i would think potentially any faction would be able to take this but that i think i don't know how it works exactly but i would think that both teams could have one of these at the same time so i don't think it'll like break the game or anything if anybody can get one i do like the new terrain pieces the magma draw skeleton and also like that floating piece are pretty cool I'm a big fan of all this stuff. I like the idea that, you know, they're build, building this outpost and then in the middle of like constructing this outpost or city or whatever, there's like constant battle going on. So they're like trying to finish it. It's not quite done yet. Stuff's getting broken. Wall stuff's getting finished. Pretty cool overall. Looks like it's going to be a nice set. And, you know, depending on how you break it down, you know, it's technically what? One, two three four five main pieces of scenery 
Yeah, so, I mean, I would imagine it's probably going to be around, like, 150. I think just for scenery, they'd be hesitant to go any higher than that. And if it comes in lower than that, I think it'll be a pretty big, pretty good deal. Uh, because it only really has, like, the one monster in it, and then the rest is just terrain. The terrain is really nice. I just don't know if people will pay as much for just a terrain pack. Like, when it was just these two buildings, one of these... And then there was like another kind of smaller piece. I think it was like the, was it the Nexus Siphon? I can't remember what the fourth piece of terrain was in the Realmscape expansion before. But that was originally 80 bucks with the boards. And then it went up with a recent price hike to 100 So I think for this also, and then this, and this is a nicer piece of terrain or larger piece of terrain. I think 150 seems pretty reasonable. Could see it as high as 170 uh, we'll have to see when it gets closer, and then I think probably 60 bucks for the book. This is pretty cool. You could do a nice paint job on this. The overall aesthetic of it's pretty cool. It sounds like they have a nice little storyline behind it and everything. Cool little art piece. So, uh, But there's one other thing I wanted to take a look at. But uh, let me know your opinion on this as well, uh, what you think so far. But we see also a uh, terrifying new Night Haunt character emerges from the Briny Deep at Adepticon. We've revealed the Arena of Shades Battle Box and announced that the new Night Haunt Battle Tome is on the way soon. And now at Adepticon, we have seen the new Night Haunt hero padding, uh, paddling into view. Uh, so let's take a look at this as well. So pretty cool, obviously a new model. Let's take a closer look. In life, Alrock the Drowner was a wicked ferryman who killed those he was supposed to transport. Uh, we're sure you can guess its preferred method from his name. Nagash liked his style, so in death he is tasked with the ferrying the spirits of the deceased to wherever the Lord of Death needs them. So he is Aulak the Drowner, but he is a ferryman. I really like this model. I think it is super awesome. I love the kind of lantern and lights up here. They have still like kind of like the ghosts that are kind of flying around or like spirits that are flying around like the uh, undead models. But they've given them like a little more kind of a ghoulish look and a little more, a little less like ghostly look. Uh, his actual like ruined little boat is pretty cool. We see like some bones and skeletons down in there. Uh, very cool kind of like spinal and ribs and everything making up like the front of it uh the model himself is pretty nice fits the aesthetic very well and he's like chained to his boat and then he's got like the big paddle with like the roses on it uh very cool i really like this model i think it's great uh, i love the lore of like the fairy man basically like transferring people uh between the realms uh this is great i think this is an awesome awesome model super detailed the aesthetic for night haunt is just next level and if you haven't seen the arena of shades yet uh, that looks awesome as well. Definitely excited for that. This highly atmospheric new miniature perfectly fits the Night Haunt range, but Alrock adds more than just an eerie model to your forces. He has special rules to help your army get wherever it needs on the tabletop, offering his allies passage through the underworlds. When he's not busy rowing, the Drowner is pretty handy in a fight with his oar, and we recommend staying away from this pointy end of his boat. So very cool. He's got like some treasure and bones back inside there. Super detailed boat. Uh, like the rotten and busted wood. Looks awesome. It's got like that cool little uh, reinforced metal on the front there. A couple tombstones on the base as well. Very, very nice looking model. I love like that body cage that he's kind of in. And then of course he doesn't have like a bottom half. He's just like ghostly and then he's chained to this. So sort of like imprisoned by his own fate. We can't give away any of his rules details yet, but let's just say it won't be a fairy tale ending for your opponents, 
when you unleash the Drowner upon them. Set sail for our hub page where you can see all the big announcements from Adepticon. So yeah, I mean, great looking model. Definitely some more love for the Night Haunt. Uh, very exciting. Obviously, we know their codex is on the way as well. So let me know what you think of the uh, couple things that we took a look at today. Uh, what do you think of the new setting for Mortal Realms? What do you think of the Drowner, uh, the old ferryman? And, uh, you know, let me know what you'll be picking up if you're excited about anything in particular, anything I have missed or input that you have. Uh, if you're new to the channel also and you're into Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, or even a little Horus Heresy or, uh, you know, Underworlds as well, uh, basically touch on anything tabletop gaming related, uh, typically Games Workshop products and uh, games. Uh, we do commissions also, so we show off commissions when they come out of the studio, have tons and tons of painting tutorial videos magnetization, lighting, pretty much anything you can imagine for uh, Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, all those games. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe for reactions, reviews, and news. And uh, that's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios, I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.